We celebrate Jesus' birthday. Jesus' birthday. Presents and Jesus' birthday. <laughs> Spending time with my family. That is Jesus' birthday. He got born. He was born. He died for our sins. It's about Jesus who was born. Died for us. He died for us. No, it's his birthday. Yeah. <laughs> um, he was born? <laughs> Probably McDonald's. Ice Everything. cream. Ham. Ham. Brownies. Cookies. Ice cream. I'll probably get my mom like some jewelry and I'll get my dad cold. A toy. Phone. An iPhone 12. A better phone for my dad because it's old. For my mom a necklace and for my dad some shoes. In uh, Bethlehem. In a manger. In a manger. In a stable. Bethlehem. Mary. 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 And. Joseph. 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 God. Because he had the baby in her tummy. A donkey. A donkey. A camel. A donkey. They seen a star. Yeah. The angel. A star. A star. Angels. It's about Jesus who was born. Jesus is to the good. Jingle bells. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bells. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. <laughs> jingle bells. Jingle bells. Santa, tell me. Santa, tell me, are you really there? How are the heroes? Heart the Heralds, that's a good one, Elias. I think we should sing that together. Would you stand up with us as we sing? Heart the Herald Angels sing in the choir. Will you help us?
want to continue the scene. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning. Are you happy to be in church on Christmas Eve? Yes. I'm so thankful we get to celebrate Jesus and all that he's done. And we're going to continue to sing these next couple of songs. And we pray that it's a blessing to you as we cherish and celebrate that Jesus Christ has come to the earth to give us salvation.
sing songs of praise and sing songs that celebrate what you have done in this Christmas season. God, I thank you for bringing us all here for the moments such as this, Lord. God, we pray that you would speak to our hearts and that you have your way in our lives, Lord, as we continue to remember the importance and the magnitude of what you have done for us. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church together said, amen. amen. You can be seated. Awesome. Thank you, team, for those incredible Christmas songs. Man, it is so good to see you guys here tonight. We ask it again. Are you glad to be here in church tonight and online with us at Grace Online? Uh, we, let, let's, do, do, let's do this. For those who are here for the first time and those who are back for the first time, can we give it up for all those who are here for the first time, those who are back once again since all this started? So good to see you guys here tonight at Christmas at Grace for our Christmas Eve service. We're going to continue with some songs here in a few moments, and we're going to take a look at God's Word about really not just what Christmas is all about, but really what life itself is all about. And then towards the end of our service, we're going to have a candlelight moment with real candles. And so for those of us that like to burn things, this moment will be for you. And if you're with us online, this is a BYOL event. Bring your own lighter, all right? And so you guys can uh, uh, be a part of us with the uh, candlelight service if you have something there in your house you're comfortable burning. And so uh, what we'd like to do before we continue on is uh, we would love to hear from you, especially if you're new with us tonight. We have a connect card, and that's a QR code that's there right on the back of your seats. If you're online, it's there for you as well. All you have to do is open up the photo app on your phone, point your phone at the QR code, and a connect card is right there on your device. We also have something that we used way back in the 1700s called paper and pen, and that's also in the seat back in front of you. And a connect card is just for you guys to let us know if we can pray for you, if you have a question about the Bible, if you would like to, in 2021, uh, learn more about uh, Grace Fellowship or getting plugged into a church. That's a way for you to communicate with us about where you are, and we'd love to encourage you with that. And finally, before we do another incredible song by this team, and guys, thank you so much again. Can we give it up for our worship team and our AV crew and camera folks that are helping this be broadcast to so many online? We appreciate uh, what you guys do. Uh, but those who are here as members and regular attenders, there's another opportunity to give to our Christmas offering. You can do that online just to select that uh, opportunity to give as we continue to reach Palm Beach County, South Florida, and the world for Jesus Christ. That's why we exist, and really the mission of any church that takes God's word serious, that's why we all exist as part of the kingdom of God, helping people who are far from God come to know God. So we're going to pray as we connect through the Connect card, and those of us who are, again, members or regular attenders that feel led to give, you can have the opportunity to do that. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we are so thankful to be here tonight. We're so thankful to be able to sing these songs, to be reminded of what these, these old hymns and songs teach, these, these truths that are rooted into the very fabric of the Bible, in, in, in the very heart of your word that you have given to us and that you have preserved for us throughout thousands of years. Lord, thank you for bringing us to this place tonight. And we pray for those of us that here uh, online or in the house that may be a little discouraged that you'll help us to see your power and that that things can be uh, what you desire them to be in our lives if we would just lean in to your arms through faith and, and confidence in your son Jesus. And we ask this in his name. Amen. Said the night wind to the little lamb Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, the tall land Do you see what I see? Oh, a star 
dancing in the night with a tail as big as a cow with a tail as big as a cow oh oh yeah said the little lamb to the shepherd boy do you Shepherd boy, yes. Do you hear what I hear? Oh, a song, a song. High above the trees, where the voice as big as the sea, with a voice as big as the sea. The shepherd boy to the mighty king. Do you know what I know? In your palace, warm, mighty king. Yes. Do you know what I know? Oh, a child, a child. He shivers in the cold Let us bring silver and gold Let us bring him silver and gold Let us bring silver and gold Said the king to the people Listen to what I say Pray for peace People everywhere Listen to what I say Oh, oh, oh the child, the child Oh, he's sleeping in the night You will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. Oh, He will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us, He will bring us goodness Welcome again to Grace Fellowship, a church for all nations, the first of two Christmas Eve services. Are you guys glad to be in church tonight? 
Man, it is so good to see you guys. We, this really means a lot to us just as a church family and to me personally as the pastor here and uh, had my family right here on the front row just a few moments ago. And so my wife brought our two uh, toddler age boys uh, back to my office so they can watch it on the screen so that you guys would be able to actually hear this message. And uh, so we're, it's just going to be a, a fun time tonight. We're going to take a look at God's word here and uh, then we're going to come back with just an emphasis on how Jesus is the light of the world, um, but as I just, I just mentioned, I, I am a dad, and uh, I thought maybe if I could, since this is sort of a special service, it's not again a regular Sunday service where we have a, just a lot of constraints, I, I felt it may be part of my duty to share, if I could, if you will indulge me, to share with you what is uh, often known today as a dad joke. Can we do that? All right, it's not going to last long, I promise, but uh, for the dads in the room, if your dad joke game is already high, I salute you, uh, and I want it just to go higher. I want it to go through the stratosphere, and if you are working on your dad joke game, you are welcome. All right, you ready? What do you call a snowman who works out? Frosty the swole man. Huh? So you can drop that at your Christmas dinner, or you say, Pastor Jeff, I just filed that right now in my mind. But, uh, you know, Christmas does, whether you like puns or whether you're a normal person, it brings a lot of opportunities for humor, right? Does it, doesn't it? Because Christmas is tradition, and for some of us, we're going to meet with family, and some of us are going to do virtual this year, but it gives us the opportunity uh, to have a lot of opportunities for uh, humor. So last year, I just got to share this with you guys. We, it was right after Christmas, and our at the time three year old son was sitting there in his seat at that great, glorious establishment called Texas Roadhouse. Can I get a witness? Praise Jesus for Texas Roadhouse. I mean, the, uh, the green beans, whatever sauce or juice that is, like I could drink that as a beverage. I'm not even kidding. And so we're just sitting there and a lot of people were there. And so there was a, a man who was waiting to be seated and he was standing right by us. And this, this guy was, was older and just a real robust looking dude and had, you know, white hair and a long white beard and our three-year-old's just looking up at him, sizing him up. Now, if you have kids, you will know what I'm talking about. Whenever your kid locks onto somebody or something and you see their wheels begin to spin, you know they're going to ask something. And you're like, Lord in heaven, please help my child not to be me in this moment, please. And so he looks up at this guy who, and just to be honest, this guy looks like what uh, some of us have in our yards right now. And he says, I can sing Jingle Bells. <laughs> and I said, son, that is not Santa Claus. Uh, that, that is a leader in a local bike gang, and we call him Sir, not Santa. And we're now going to buy his lunch, right? Like it's one of those moments that just surrounds family and kids. Some of you guys may get that uh, after Christmas. But... Um, but we just want this time to really drill down, if we can, on what this whole thing is all about. Doesn't matter what brand of politics we find ourselves attaching to or pushing away from, I think we can all see that Christmas has become somewhat commercialized. True or not true? Like in a sense, Christmas in certain aspects has become a business. But the Word of God teaches us what the incarnation, that's the coming of the Son of God into the world. That's the foundation for what Christmas is all about, that that is what the reason for the season is. And so there's a verse of scripture. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to open. If you don't yet have a Bible, there's an opportunity for you to download one free on your phone from the App Store. It's got like over 300 million downloads. It's an incredible tool. Uh, Galatians chapter 4, here's what the Word of God says. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And what's particularly meaningful to me is that phrase, when the fullness of time had come. And man, there have been a lot of us this year that have been waiting. Amen? 
We've been, we've been waiting on you name it, and we've been waiting for it. But when the fullness of time had come, then God sent forth his son. You see, what the word of God is reminding us of is that even when it seems that God is late, God is right on time. You see, when we, when we read the word of God, we see that God's timing is spot on. When it says the fullness of time had come, it meant that it had to take a while. It meant that there was that indefinite period of time that led up to the definitive entrance of Jesus Christ into the world. And for those of us in the room or watching online who really enjoy history, we know at the time that Jesus came into the world was the time where the Romans had built roads. There's a, a popular uh, way to share the gospel, to tell people about Jesus called the Romans Road. And it made the ancient world um, uh, travelable, like, like, like you could get places because of those roads roads the known world spoke uh, almost like a universal language the language uh, from Greece they, they spoke Corne Greek and when you look at history and you see all of these moves like some of us may be familiar with the Christmas story when Caesar gave that executive order and says you know what I need more money for more expansive wars to increase my empire and part of that is everybody had to go to their hometown to be what? Taxed. Taxes are nothing new. Amen? <laughs> See? I don't know how old you are, young child, but you already realize it. It's a bright, bright child right there. Who knows? Maybe the parents are CPAs. We, we, son, let me teach you. <laughs> but like... It, again, if you like thinking about this stuff, you think about all of the pieces that were put into place before Jesus came into the world. With all of the different nationalities, they all had the ability to understand that, that language. And with the Romans, they had the ability to actually travel. And, and the Romans had basically locked down a large part of the, the ancient world in terms of what we would call like street crime. Like they didn't, not, not a lot of that happened. Even the story of Julius Caesar when he was a teenager and he was captured by pirates. And they said, we're going to hold you for ransom. He told the entire crew of pirates, once I'm ransomed, I'm going to come back and crucify every one of you. They thought that was hilarious until he did it. Random, horrifying, historical nugget for you tonight on Christmas Eve. <laughs> it's true. But the point is that it was that Pax Romana, the Roman peace, that stability that usually came with no small amount of tyranny, but it locked things down to the point that when Jesus Christ came into the world, when the fullness of time had come, you see, and when the message that, that God has come into the world, the Son of God, God sent forth his Son, sent him on a mission, God's intentionality. And by the way, God does not socially distance from us. Amen? We can push away from him, but he does not push away from us if we seek to know him. But the stage was set. And you think about all of the people who were looking for the Messiah, all of the people who were thinking, God, the world is messed up and it's broken. Where are you? And I know we've probably had a number of conversations with those in our lives who are asking the same questions this year. This is not a normal year. This is not a normal Christmas Eve service. Some of us may be asking those questions in our own lives. Lord, with all that I've experienced and my family has gone through, all that we see in the world, where are you? Guys, from the bottom of my heart, I've seen it this year. I've seen great suffering. I've seen great pain. But I've seen that God is still at work in the world. And if we can be real honest, man, especially for some of us guys, when things are going well, we have the tendency. We don't always do this because God is gracious and he provides us godly people, good mentors or, or faithful mom or, or a wife or a significant other to set us straight sometimes. But we have the tendency, right, guys, to think that we, life is good because of what we've done. But when things begin to fall apart, things that are outside of our control, it's often in those moments we begin to look to God. And what I want to put forward to you tonight is that Jesus Christ is not just the reason for the season. Jesus Christ is the point and the purpose and the meaning of all of the universe. 
Jesus Christ was born of a woman. He had to become one of us to bear our sins, our shame, and our guilt. And if you're a thinking person, just the writings of the ancient church fathers are brilliant because the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ, had to be one of us in order to represent us, in order to receive the penalty for our sins. But you can't just choose any one of us because we're all flawed. I mean, if you know somebody in your life who doesn't think that they're flawed, run. Like, be careful. Watch them. Don't turn your back. None of us, every single one of us would fail that job application. The job application of a savior, a deliverer, a rescuer. But that's why Jesus was the virgin-born son of God. No inherited sin nature. No inherited corrupted heart like we all have. A tendency to go selfish. Jesus, the son of God, was born of a woman under the law. In other words, the framework of prophecy. Again, if you're not yet a follower of Christ, I'm so excited that you are here tonight just simply engaging. Or you say, Pastor Jeff, like I, you said it's 45 minutes. I heard somebody say this. So I got my countdown going, bro. You got like four minutes and 18 seconds. I'm still glad you're here. If you're online and you conveniently pulled up a YouTube video on how to redo your baseboards, I'm still glad you have us on half the screen. I mean that. But what I'm saying is that just because we all may not be here tonight ready to follow Jesus doesn't mean that we're not ready to entertain what is the best decision in life, and that's how you make sense out of life. No matter what you do, no matter even uh, the young child here tonight who recognized that taxes have been a part of life for a really long time, our resident genius baby, doesn't matter what, you know, what type of sports team you prefer or whether you don't even like sports, we're all trying to figure out meaning. And I want to submit to you tonight that Jesus Christ is the point and the purpose for the universe. Not only does Jesus Christ help us make sense of why there is the greatest philosophical question of all is why is there anything at all? Why does anything exist at all? Is there a design? Is there a purpose behind the cosmos? Or is, it, or is the existence of the universe simply a brute fact? I believe that Jesus brings the answers to those things. And he came to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. In other words, Jesus Christ came to redeem us of an empty way of living. There's many religious people in West Palm Beach all across the world that are still living an empty life. Because religion cannot get you to heaven. Religion ultimately, listen, cannot make you a righteous person. Only God can do that. If you're not a religious person, in the end, ultimately everything is meaningless and without purpose. Everything that we can find in our lives that drives us and gives us hope that can be taken away is ultimately a dry well and it is false advertising. And I think for some of us, the reason why we struggled so much this year is we, and we, we never realized how much we love Starbucks. Nothing wrong with coffee. But for some of us, we're struggling because I had no idea how much I loved live music events. I had no idea how much I loved football. And then those who say, well, there's actually something called soccer, which is the real football because you actually use your foot on the ball throughout the game, most of the game. That's the real football. Some of us haven't realized how much we truly enjoy sitting down inside a Chick-fil-A. But I want you to think of every fun thing Everything that gets your adrenaline pumping, every amenity that life has to offer, and if you take that away, does your life meaning drop? Does the meaningfulness of you taking in breath and breathing back out, does that degrade if those things are taken away? Listen, I don't care what you believe. I think this entire year has been a gut check for us on does life have a point and are the things that I have looked to in my past, even the beginning of this year, do those things, are they able to provide the meaning that will sustain me? 
what I believe and what so many people even here at Grace Fellowship Church, a church for all nations have experienced this year is that Jesus Christ is not only the centerpiece for the universe, he's the centerpiece of history and that even if everything that we've ever enjoyed is stripped away, even if our own health, we pray the Lord gives us all health, but even if that uh, falls to the side, if we have Jesus, our life still has meaning because Jesus can never never be taken away. And so what I think so many of us are seeing, I pray there's more, but how Christianity shines the brightest in times of great challenge. That's personally, and that's across the board. Listen, I don't care if you are a wild Christmas fanatic or you're a card-carrying member of the Scrooge party. Don't care if you love Christmas or you're just saying, no, you know what, Lord, you know, Pastor Jeff, I just want to say the fact that we are, we are not meeting with family this year is one of my greatest prayer answers of all time. Thanks be to God who does all things exceedingly abundantly above whatever I could ask or think. There's some mumbling going on, so maybe that hits some hit homes. So I'm just going to keep going on, but... If you know that Jesus Christ, if we just sit down and have a conversation, if Jesus Christ is not at the forefront of your life at this moment, would you be willing to respond to him right now? Like not later tonight, right now. There will be a day in which the Bible says that God will judge the world in righteousness. There will be a point to where every single one of us, not as a family, but as an individual, will be before the Lord. And what we've done with Jesus that will make all the difference. Guys, Jesus Christ is a mighty, awesome, merciful, patient Savior. You can never outrun his love. He is able to save to the uttermost. If you feel at this point in your life you are so broken and tattered and shredded that no one could do anything with you, let me say that Jesus Christ is the one for you. He is able to save and redeem and to make your life new from the inside out. If you would be willing to respond to Jesus, and you say, what does that mean? It means turning from your sin, turning from living life for you or trying to be your best simply out of your own goodness, but placing your faith and your trust and your confidence in Jesus alone, that's something that the Bible calls repentance. It's having a changed mind, you see. Saying I'm no longer trusting myself, I'm trusting Christ and in Christ alone. And what we've seen here in this church this year, there have been so many people who God is waking up. Would you be willing to respond to Jesus tonight? There's a way that you can let us know what God is doing in your life. It is the Connect card. It's right there on your seat. Or you can, again, open your uh, phone and uh, have the QR code there. We would love to follow up with you after the holidays are finished. This is a great time to be with family and friends, but it could be that in God's sovereignty, he has you here tonight or online with half of the screen with the YouTube video still going, but you have one channel in each ear. We still love you. Thank you for being with us. It could be that God has you here to radically change your life. Would you be willing to respond to Jesus tonight? Well, at this point, we're going to have our silent night uh, with our candles, and so I'm going to ask our, I guess we could call you fire passers, to, uh, to make your way to the stage, and I'm going to see how good my lighter game is tonight. I really hope that this does work, and so if you uh, received a, um, a candle, uh, you can go ahead and uh, put that in your hand, and we will start um, passing this fire candle row by row, and we're going to sing Silent Night together. And what I want you to think about is just the power of one candle.
us in John 8 12 I am the light of the world he who follows me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life so as we sing this last verse together I want you to think about the power of what one light can do one to the next and think about Jesus Christ who is not a light but he is the light of the world let's think about the power the goodness the grace of Jesus Christ as we sing this last verse together Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light. that comes from Jesus Christ is so that we can be lights unto a dark world. Amen, church? All right, so this next part, what we're going to do is we're going to count to three and then we're gonna put out our lights together. So um, however you want to do that, if you want to blow out your candle, I would encourage you not to uh, be too enthusiastic lest you spray the person in front of you with hot wax. And so whether they're your friend or enemy, let's honor the Lord Jesus in this moment, all right? So we're gonna count to three, and on three, we're gonna put out all of our candles together. Are we ready? All right, I know those of us that enjoy burning things, this can be a painful moment, but just bear with us. All right, ready? Here we go. One, two, three. All right, some of us are still trying, it's good. There's a lot of love in the room. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here with us at Christmas at Grace for our Christmas Eve service. I hope that you have an incredible Christmas time with your family. And if you're looking to get plugged into a church in 2021, we'd love to have you here at Grace. Let me pray for you, and then we'll go. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time we've had with families and uh, friends and just being able to come together in solidarity around the gospel. We thank you for every person here, every person watching online, and we give you praise for what you have done. And we pray that uh, wherever we are uh, in our, our faith journey, that you will bring us to where you want us to be. Lord, we believe that there's a lot of us who are watching online or here in the house, that, that the step that we need to take is to become a genuine, committed follower of Jesus Christ. Father, help us to reach out, and we know that we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you. We love you. Merry Christmas.